We're looking at point of view today, who is speaking and why it matters. Point of view is the vantage point from which an author presents a story. It can be told first, second, or third person. But before we can get into that, we need to know the difference between dialogue and narration. Dialogue is the conversation between characters, while the narration is the written particulars of an occurrence or a series of events. So looking at dialogue examples first, Mindy could say, well, the cat died. And Jim could say, no, not Mr. Fluffer Tuffers. I've had him since I was 12. Here's our dialogue. But we can add in narration to give us more specifics, cried Jim through his huge tears of grief. This is going to give us not only who is speaking, but how they're speaking and how they're reacting. But narration can also provide us more information, such as Mindy did not involve, mention her involvement. As we look at the types of point of view, we're looking specifically at narration. So first person narration uses I, me, us, we, or my, and the narrator is involved in the story, thus they only know what she or he has seen or thought. If you're a video game player, you may be familiar with first person shooter. That means, just like the photo here, you're a part of the action. Hypothetically, if we were doing a first person perspective, we are the people in that photo. One of us has one of those pairs of feet, and this is our perspective of life. We are at that rather lovely beach. Now, first person narrators can both be reliable or unreliable. A reliable narrator will give us an unbiased view of what's going on, but that's not really realistic. And we're seeing more and more unreliable first person narrators in stories these days. Um, they can be unscrupulous, evil characters, or they could um, just have a real hatred toward one character and it colors the views of an event. Now, first person point of view has been around for quite a bit. So we're looking at an older novel here, Treasure Island. I take up my pen in the year of grace 17 something or other and go back to the time when my father kept, okay, here we have used the first person. We see I and me, my father, we're already engaged. Authors use first person point of view to get us into the action quicker because we connect with a first person narrator much quicker than we would with a third. We don't have to know about what color their hair is or how they brush their teeth. We just know, oh, I'm going to be taking in the mental strain of this character, which is different than third person because we have a certain, well, step back if you would. We use she or he and they as our pronouns and the narrator is not involved in the action but relaying the events. Like this photograph here, or again, if you've played a, um, a video game where you have third person view, you're standing back and watching everything as if you're looking at a photograph. You're not in the picture, you're looking at others who are in the picture. And that presents two different options. We can have two types of third person narrator, omniscient or limited. An omniscient narrator knows every single thing that's going on. That means they can hear all of the character's thoughts, whereas a limited can either only hear one character's thoughts or none at all. And this is what that looks like. In the novel Little Women, we get to hear everyone's thoughts. So in that first bit here, we're talking about Jo, and she says she knew it very well, for it was that beautiful old story of the best life ever lived. And Jo felt that it was a true guidebook. So we have her opinions, her thoughts, and her connections to an event. Later in the book, her mom is thinking. Hoping to impress the lesson more deeply, Mrs. March, who had a good deal of humor, resolved to finish off the trial in an appropriate manner. So here we have two different people's thoughts, actions, and reactions um, as seen through an omniscient narrator. However, third person limited looks a little more standoffish. Here in Animal Farm, our narrator knows no thoughts of any character. As soon as the light in the bedroom went out, there was a stirring and a fluttering all through the farm buildings. Word had gone round during the day that Old Major, the prize middle white boar, had had a strange dream on the previous night and wished to communicate it to the other animals. Here, the limited narrator gives us just the facts, if you would please, ma'am. No emotions and certainly no thoughts. Now. Less common is the second person point of view. It uses the pronoun you, and the narrator is referring to a character. It can be the protagonist or just a secondary character. Um, in, in a great example would this be um, in our photograph here, we have the flip-flops would say something like, you abandon your shoes to go dip your feet into the white foaming ocean. 
it's more common in form and writing types and role-playing books. Um, and we tend to think it kind of pretentious in American literature, but it does exist. Check out these examples. Here's from a film, Bright Lights, Big City. You're not the kind of guy who would be at a place like this at this time in the morning, but here you are, and you cannot say that the terrain is entirely unfamiliar, although the details are fuzzy. Or, maybe you've seen this instead, a choose-your-own-adventure novel. You're sitting at home, minding your own business, when someone knocks at your door. What will you do? And then you get to choose, because you are a part of the action. Now, point of view also shows up in nonfiction, <clears throat> although it doesn't necessarily give us insights into characters as it does in fiction. Instead, it allows us to look for bias. So in first-person examples of nonfiction, we see autobiographies and memoirs. We need to be aware of bias here because they're retelling an event through their own memories, and that can be kind of skewed. It also can be colored through their opinions of people or events. Similarly, editorials and opinion articles are entirely persuasive text, and by using first person, we need to be aware that their bias is the entire point behind the, the article. Second person in nonfiction is a bit more common as we see travel guides and do-it-yourself are going to present lots of the you bits. And this isn't necessarily bias, it's just kind of there. Third person, however, is the least uh, likely to have bias as it's more common for news articles, biographies, and essays. Now these can be persuasive, thus their thesis can be uh, a different opinion than yours, um, but they're not going to state in a very clear bias, and if they do, that's not good, and you should look for a lesson on this channel about that. In review on point of view, it is the vantage point from which an author presents a story. First and third person are most common, and second is pretty rare, but you do see it. And point of view encourage us to pay attention to details, because it shows out bias. Thus, it's most important in both fiction and nonfiction. Have a great day.